How are you doing? I'm going crazy. From your cold? <laughs> no, from my 13th great-grandmother. I uh, just keep finding more little teeny flags. Where is she, this woman? Well, she's in England. She's a baroness. What century? <laughs> from the 1400s. <laughs> her, her name is Baroness Margaret Cromwell from the Cromwell family that is so well known. Yesterday in the mail I got um, another little note from Marina, Jean's wife, and with some pictures that she'd been going through and pulled out for me. And the picture that really hit me was um, one of Jean and I and Krista and Leah and uh, the tears came when I saw this picture. Oh, my God. Talk to me about I don't, it. I don't have a lot of pictures of Jane. We saw each other very few times. We really reconnected. Um, in our later years. And so the pictures she sent mean a lot to me. And this is, this is a picture from um, Dad and Ruth's uh, 25th wedding anniversary that they had over at their house. And uh, that was the first time I'd seen Jean in a long time. And um, so I think the reconnection really started right here. At the, on this day? On this day. So. And me. Oh, I... You're not very old there. Nope. Just a couple months old. And then on the Everett side, um, I can go and go and go. I mean, this stuff. This is where you get go back in time. Yeah. And these, if I click on those relatives, see those flags? That just means that there's another hint that I haven't found yet, that I haven't looked at. And here, we're back in the 1700s. And let's see, this is... On the Smith side. And... Um, And then the Smiths go on up in, on in perpetuity, I think. What does that mean? Well, I haven't found the end of them. Or the beginning. <laughs> or the beginning. I just keep clicking on the Smiths, and here's a Aaron Smith, Benjamin Smith, Caleb, and another Caleb. And that goes up to Smith, Thomas, Smythe, Smythe. And I'm in the 1500s, 1500s, 1400s. And here's where the Cromwells come in. And these people here were all um, came to 
Plymouth, Massachusetts. Um, so he was born in England and married in England and died in England. So I think it's the next generation down. No, nope, they're still in England here, Richard, in the 1400s. And in the 1500s. And in the 16, or we're still in the 1500s. Shakespeare hasn't been born yet now. We're going to have the King James Bible pretty soon. <laughs> 1599. 1700s. And what are you uh, recording this on? Ancestry.com. Okay, this is Ancestry, which is a... Tell me about that it's program. It's a genealogy site. Uh -huh. And it connects people all over the world that are searching for their ancestors. So when you, the further back you go, the more ancestors you have and the more hints that come in from all over. Um, okay, here we, we have Thomas Smith, and he was born in England and died in 1694 in Virginia. Now, you watch the, the Gates Ancestry yeah. program, too. How, how how does do these these uh, ancestry shows further your uh, your education or your appreciation? Well, I think they um, go a little bit deeper into occupations and you know the historical facts of where where they lived and what they might have. Um, done in their lives, and um, I get lost in here too. So, see. So, oh yeah, yeah. Part of the part of the search is part of the search the need to get lost. Probably. And here's where I start connecting with the, um, now, the Smiths were <clears throat> settled in Virginia and in the, you know, Kentucky, and they ended up in Indiana. So these aren't the, the um, part of the family that was in Massachusetts. These were earlier people that came South. Do you have any contact with living relatives here from these guys, from this thread? Well, the Smiths are part of, um, they become um, the, uh, the Turpin side. So Permelia married Harvey Turpin, and that was my grandmother. Uh, my great grandfather. And this is my grandmother. Where? Right here. That's Viola May Turpin. And then that's her. Um, Um, tombstone at the Brownsburg Cemetery in Brownsburg, Indiana. Hmm. Is this little rocking chair over here the rocking chair that you had to go back to? Yes. Indiana to get to? Yeah, in 1979 we went back to Indiana with all three kids. We drove mm -hmm. cross country and when we got to Mary's um, 
right not too long after we got there. She uh, went up to the attic and came down with that rocking chair and, and said that um, Aunt Marjorie had kept this chair for me and said it was Karen's. It was my mother's, Alice Everett, and that I had to come back to get it. But nobody ever told me it was there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know I had to come back to get it. And so we carried that back with us from Indiana in 1979. Well, it's Thanksgiving 2012, and we're going out to your daughter's. And, uh, my Aunt Marjorie was always telling me about family history, and she uh, kept track of it. She had a, uh, I, I knew about this when I was probably in elementary school. This is the history of the ge and genealogy of the Turpin family, and um, it was written in the, let's see if there's a, a date here. Yeah, um, from 1907 to 1910. And so I have family here that goes back on the Turpin side past the Civil War and into the Civil War and their stories. Hold it, that page there. Go ahead. And there are, it's not just a genealogy because there are stories in here too, along with pictures of who's who. And um, I have coveted this book for years and I did find it online. And so um, somebody has, has scanned this book into the internet, so it's available for anybody that wants it now. Um, but when we were back there this summer with uh, Krista and Bob and Katie and Deanna, um, I, my cousin Jim said, Mary, don't you have a couple extra copies of this book? And uh, because all the, all the cousins have their own but I didn't live in Indiana, so I really never got a copy of this book. And so now I have Johnny's, um, my cousin Johnny's. <laughs> and my cousin Becky has also done all kinds of genealogy work. Each time we go back, we bring out the old albums and, and look at them, and she can tell me who's who and how they're related. And so I've been trying to put all that information on the ancestry so I can follow the different um, family members backwards and forwards. So, so sometimes I have more information going backwards than I do on the newer people, so I'm trying to fill that in too. Lucille, Jim's mom, also did a lot of genealogy work and um, always talked about the Miller family and who is who in the Millers. And so I, I have her information on the Millers and then another one on her mother's side, I believe. And so <clears throat> I have lots of information that hasn't been loaded, and, and there are pictures that go with it. And uh, in looking at all of that, the other day I came across stories about Jim's dad and his family, and um, who we really don't know much about. Um, so I printed those out for Jim to see and to read, and, and it uh, fills in some gaps in, you know, not really believing why we didn't know more when we were younger.
because some of these relatives were living during our lifetime, but yet didn't have any contact with them. Part of that is from the, the move to from North Dakota to Seattle, but um, there was a lot still in North Dakota that might have been part of a family secret. I don't know. Well, we'll unravel it together. And then we made lefts up <clears throat> this week, which Jem's mom, Lucille, um, taught us all how to make and told me that since I was the oldest, I had to carry on the tradition. And so now we have my kids and my grandchildren all making lefsa and loving the process and knowing that that's a tradition for, for um, the holidays, for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And this year, our lefsa was terrible. It, it tastes fine. It just was gooey and watery and so I've been researching lefsa online, and I came across all kinds of information on how to make lefsa. So I'm comparing recipes now for next year. And the, the one thing I have found is that um, everybody cools the potatoes after they're riced, but I can't find anybody who puts the, after they make the balls of lefsa, they don't put it overnight in the refrigerator again. They make the lefsa right then. So either we've forgotten something or because we kept it overnight and they went to mush. So next year we should be in for perfection again. <laughs> Thank you very much, Karen. Ben Paris, right there. That's Lena, Lena and Yuna's uncle. Is this you? Mm -hmm. Three. What? What's the date? January 11th, 1943. What is it? It's a letter to the telephone company saying that Mr. Bert Benson, machinist lead man, who was recently married and is now living in Creosote, Washington. And this man is on call at all times at the yard, and we are very desirous that a telephone be installed in his residence. <laughs> That's from Uncle George. This is the only thing between you and us at camp, getting lots of exercise and getting in good shape, hoping everyone is well at home. Your brother George. This is 1943, April. Here's a letter my mother wrote to Jean. What'd she say? Sorry, I forgot your address, so we'll mail this to Daddy, and you can get it. I had a wonderful time at home. I'll see you before you get this card. Sure will be glad to get back home. Love, Dorothy. Glad your mom's handwriting. Mm -hmm. Well, the present War Labor Board regulations preclude the payment of substantial Christmas bonuses. We were able to make a small bonus payment as an expression of our appreciation for your loyalty and faithful service. Thanks for your dad. I uh, wonder if this is yep, yeah, Lake like Cleelum, June 1970. I was the um, 
camping trip when I was suspecting I was pregnant with Tim. So June, brother. I thought, why do I re remember some things and not remember others? I mean, that's as clear as could be. I guess so. It's my grandma Everett's writing. From the first one, or no. 1918. Read the headline. Oh. Mary and Johnny. Side picture there. Seattle's blackout. The effectiveness of it. The upper is the picture taken at nine o'clock reveals Seattle lighted by thousands of lights and clearly visible from the air. The, the lower is a five minute time exposure taken during the blackout. Hmm. What was the date on that? I don't see a date. I see the, the war was still going on when you were born. Mm. Whose scrapbook is this? Mom, my mother's. Dorothy's? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a pretty big gift right there, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Grandma and Grandpa. This for you. This bow from my wedding corsage. Your mom. Mm hmm. Here's the announcement. Made a mask now. Thanks to you. These are your letters. Some of them. In the quiet of the vault, the daughter who is a banker confronts the steel where valuables are kept. I knew I was raised Norwegian. For years, it wasn't what I didn't have. It was what I had. People fought to keep me. Dad loved me but went to pieces. He wasn't strong when Mom went. Sig is the one who pushed the swing, teased away the bird on my lower lip, when I'd pout, it was always him who called me back. I called Alice Mom from the day we were in the medical building on the top floor. I was two, and the building started to shake. Doctors tell us virus never goes away. I was always good, except when I looked at boys. I'd sit in the dinghy in the reeds for hours. Breaking silence, declaring life to be true, mother talks. They never understood why I left. Indiana was home. Everyone wanted me to stay. But the older ones already had new lives. I was the little one's best big friend. 
I could only fit into what was being made. Cousins who came behind me loved me for being young. On summer nights, light was yellow, lit by the dance of lightning bugs. I was with them then. There was never any bedtime. Oh, they loved me for those nights. Sisters could never love each other the way those kids loved me. But I was 18. The confusion of the light, underbellies of elm leaves, lost paths in summer grass. My throat was dry, salt water was the cry, lifting in the heavy air. That thirst, my secret, for so long, who could I tell? When I had a chance to go with Lem, I did. It was big, Seattle, and new, the West Coast, Pacific Ocean. In my letters home, I sent names like Bremerton, Winslow, Straits of Juan de Fuca. I wrote how boats from here fished waters off Alaska.